It's the middle of the day and we can see stars. Okay, there's the diamond ring, guys. There it is, tilt up. Woo! Amazing, this is incredible. Wow! Oh! We don't need these anymore. We're so excited because today is the day of the total solar eclipse and we're in the path of totality. Is it a coincidence that the sun, 400 times larger than the moon, could be perfectly covered by the moon so we can still see the sun's corona, the moon being 400 times closer to the earth? Is that a coincidence or did God design this? Did God make this just to show off? Where are we? Well, we're in Glen Rose, Texas. This is the location of my good friend, Dr. Carol Baugh's museum, the Creation Evidence Museum. We're at the amphitheater where the program, The Promise, is performed. And this is an amazing show. If you're ever in Glen Rose and they're running The Promise, you've got to see The Promise. Now, we've got some creation speakers right now. Bruce Malone is on the stage. He's one of the best creationists that I know. He's so exciting. He's so awesome at presenting the information for young people to be able to really grasp. And here he's presenting the facts about the eclipse, about the stars, the universe, and how complex and how precise everything is. And so what an awesome thing it is to hear from someone like Bruce Malone. So we're waiting. It's gonna be still about another hour before the beginning of the eclipse here. We're waiting for that. In the meantime, we want you to enjoy what we're talking about today, the total solar eclipse here on Ingrace. I'm so glad that you're with us today. And this is one of those kind of once in a lifetime things. This one is gonna cover much of the United States, hundreds of miles. It's about 115 miles wide, the shadow of totality. And it's gonna be going from Texas where we are all the way up to the Northeast part of the United States moving at about 1,500 miles an hour faster than the speed of sound. This is awesome when the sun, which is high in the sky, is just gonna go dark, and what an awesome thing. And it reminds me of what happened on the earth when Jesus died. The Bible says at 12 o'clock to three o'clock, the earth went dark. Now, I don't think that was an eclipse because an eclipse wouldn't last that long. This was a supernatural manifestation of the creation, mourning the death of the creator. This is an incredible experience. I've experienced one before in 2017 in Southern Illinois. This is gonna be an awesome day. There are some clouds. We're a little worried about the clouds, but it's actually clearing up. So everything seems to be lighting up. God bless you and thank you for being with us today on In Grace. Hey, you guys got something pretty cool here. Wow. All right, so who are you? My name's Ron, Ronald Carose, and this is my wife, Lorenda. Carose and uh, she um, is signing in American Sign Language. She's deaf, and we're here to enjoy God's creation, and we've been blessed with His presence and His people. Amen. Well, this is incredible. So, give me the details, and I know obviously you have to be very careful with a telescope before looking at the sun. So, obviously, you have the protected uh, shield on there. Uh, just give me the details on this thing. Oh, sure. This is a five-inch. Orion, a 134 millimeter reflector telescope, and uh, we have a um, solar shield uh, for uh, the uh, the top. It's an equatorial mount, so it uh, goes with the um, right ascension and uh, the declination of, of the Earth, uh, and, and the sky follows the uh, ecliptic, and we'll, which the sun is on the ecliptic and all the constellations and the moon. So um, I have it established now, hopefully, uh, by the grace of God, we'll uh, get some pictures of uh, the eclipse, and that's it in a nutshell. Now, have you seen a total eclipse before? No, nothing other than on the clouds. Whenever I was a, a kid, I was afraid to look up. I didn't have glasses anyway, so I knew not to look up. So, how, how old are you? Well, I'm 66 years old, and my wife is 65. So you're waiting 66, 65 years for this, and it's almost like you're a kid again. Yes. Okay, folks, we have got a man that's lost. He's looking up at the sky with his eclipse glasses. And I actually can't see you. Can you see me? Somebody said, somebody, 
Hey, 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 buddy, hey, said, how you doing, buddy? You're right. So you're said the sun, aren't you? I am, yeah. Last I, I checked. You. I've been there for like 45 years. I was born at a pretty early age and uh, so stunned by the things I saw, I didn't speak for nearly a year. But now somebody said the sun's oh, disappearing today. Since I haven't then. stopped, yeah. yeah. Somebody said the sun's disappearing today, and I'm excited about this. It's kind of So cool. if it disappears and it doesn't come back in three minutes and 13 seconds, then maybe, we're, we're in trouble. Yeah, man. yeah, we, trouble. we got our theology wrong. You know what's interesting? I see these Instagram videos, I see these TikTok videos, and people are, oh, here's the reason Jesus is coming back on the 8th. And I'm like, well, what about that verse that no man knows the day or the hour? Doesn't that kind of eliminate any? No, it actually makes today the date. It won't, it won't happen. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, anytime someone predicts the date. Uh, but we believe that Jesus is coming back. Of course. He left a couple thousand years ago. He's coming back. He's promised that. And that's what gives me great hope. Yeah. Because this, the mess that we have in this planet eventually is going to get all fixed. Yes. Right. But there is hope today. We don't have to wait for Jesus to come back. There's hope today. Absolutely. I don't know if you remember, the. you're a preacher. Of course, you're going to remember. Amos talked about an eclipse that happened, how the, the sun went dark at noon. And it was an interesting passage, and he used it to talk about judgment comes suddenly. Can you imagine being at a time where you could not predict, we didn't have astronomy at the point where we could predict a solar eclipse, and all of a sudden you're going about your day, and it starts to get dark. And over like a 45-minute period, all of a sudden it's dark, and now there's no light. It feels like nighttime. You in that time would think that judgment is coming, and Amos uses this to say, in the same way, Israel, judgment is going to come. And I think it's a great reminder for us for a couple of reasons. A lot of times we think everything's okay, we're doing fine, and all of a sudden the authority comes in and now we're in trouble. And that creates in us this stirring, this, oh my goodness, am I right? Am I doing the right thing? And uh, I, I think about, you know, eclipsing. People think that, man, I'm young, I can do, you, you run a college, I'm young, I got plenty of time. And yet how many people do we know where, where death has come and eclipsed their life at a young age. And so I think of all the different examples of what we're going to experience today and how even people in the prophet, uh, even prophets in the Bible use things like an eclipse to set the stage for a teaching, for a moment to bring clarity to why are we here? How long do we have and what should we be living for? So for me, as I experience this three minutes of totality, I'm going to be thinking, wow, what if my life is eclipsed short? Have I done everything I can for the glory of God between now and when my time comes to meet Jesus? So I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm always looking at things like this, wondering how can I make this an example for me and for others to go, how, how do we live for God more? How do we be reminded of that? We have a book, we have an anchor point, and, and that's where, the, where I get all my truth. I'm sure that's where you Absolutely. get all your It is the foundation. And so it's just opening that, reading it, know what it says, and then talk about it. Yeah, the best way to communicate truth over a long period of time, write it down. And that's what our creator did. I mean, how cool, you think about the people who are like, no, no, Jim, you can't believe the Bible. I mean, come on, Pastor Scott, the Bible was written by man. Tell me one thing that's not written by man. I mean, do we go throughout all the books in the library now? Did you want God to use pandas? Of course he's gonna use people to write down his message. And the fact that we have that, and the fact that you guys at Engrace stand on that truth and say, we're gonna stand on the word of God that was written, that was revealed, you, the more you study it, the more you realize that's I, that's the best answer you can give. I've heard people say, oh, well, we shouldn't use the Bible says. And it's like, when you really understand this, that is the best possible answer you could give. Study your Bible more to know that that's the best answer you can give. Thus saith the Lord. That's a powerful thought. Amen. So this is Pastor Mark Moore, Belmont Bible Church in our area in Chicago. And you're down here to witness this. You also spoke here today. Um, give me your impression of the moon that's about, it's almost halfway covered up. Yeah. As the beginning. I'm halfway there. Yeah. So what are you feeling? And also the light is different on the ground too. It's like, it feels yeah. almost like yellow or flat or something, right? Yeah. Like the, the vibrance of the colors are fading. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure there's a scientific <laughs> term for that that we don't really know. It's different. That's the scientific term I'm qualified to think share. that's in the textbook. But it's it's majestic. And what I mean by that is it just reminds you how small you are and how awesome God is. And the psalmist nailed it under the inspiration of the Spirit. Who is man? What what are we that God would be mindful of us, but his love for us and that he cares enough to show us his majesty? And he can be seen in everything. Job says the earth itself teaches. And it's something you really have to experience for yourself. It's it's incredible. Who is man that thou art mindful of him? Yeah, truly. 
We're just, I mean, not even an ant. Yeah. When you start to see this. And here we have the only planet in the universe that we know of that can sustain life. And this is the only moon that puts on this show with its sun. And the evidence of God is everywhere. All right. So Mark Julian, Dean of Day Bible College and Seminary. Um, we are about halfway toward the full eclipse. What are you thinking so far? I think it's really amazing just to see the magnificence of God is just unbelievable. It's just, it's really something that you don't even, I don't know, it's hard to explain, but even the light out here is different from, from the... It's like flat or something, it's isn't it? Weird. It's weird. Yeah. It's an odd feeling. And as it gets closer and closer, it's still kind of bright until literally that last ray is gone, then it's dark. Yeah. It's just, and, and you I don't know. experience that soon. It's just super amazing to see the magnificence of God and his creation. Yeah. Yeah, so we're about, I think about halfway there. Looks like it, yeah. So another, I don't know, 30, maybe 30 minutes or so. Yeah. Uh, we'll get to totality. Yeah, that's awesome. We're only minutes away yeah. from the total solar eclipse. Have you guys experienced one before? I have. You have? I have. Wow. Well, so you know what you're about to experience, yes, right? I do. And you haven't? I have not. The last one that came through, we're from North Carolina. Wow. I'm from North Carolina. Uh-huh. Uh, the last one was in 1970, and I was in the Army um, halfway around the world. Okay, okay, yeah. Uh, so uh, let me take another quick look. It's getting there. It's getting there. It, it literally looks to me like a, a, a crescent moon right now. I'm, I'm getting an interesting thing with my pictures. I'm getting a rainbow. With oh, it. are you? Are you? Oh. And even the light right now is really yeah. different than the oh, north. Absolutely, so, it's um, wow. Got a pink tint. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you guys. Thank Appreciate you. It. Are you from this area, North Carolina? North, North Carolina. Carolina. Oh, you drove. You got here from North Carolina. Yeah. See this. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Well, everyone seems to be excited about it. It's getting closer. I'm hearing a ram's horn. <laughs> Can I talk to you guys for a second? Yeah, well, any of you, are you good? At the same time, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what's your name and where are you from? Grace. Um, I'm from Kinnadale. From where? Kinnadale. Is that Texas? Yeah, just okay. a little bit below Dallas. Okay, cool, cool. Have you seen a total eclipse before? Okay, how old are you? I'm 18. Okay, well, this has changed your life. It really will. So, take a look. This is Carefully. so exciting because I'm studying this stuff in college. Are you really? Yeah, I go in for astrophysics this fall. Oh, wow. What an experience. I think this is God trying to say, hey, let's not pit science against faith. Let's see if they can work together. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Because Absolutely. I always hear people trying to say, you can't be a man of science if you're a man of God. But I think God's made science so we can discover him. Exactly and right. And that's why the sun is disappearing. <laughs> Thank you. How you guys doing? Excellent. Thank you. So tell me what your feelings are so far. Well, uh, it's uh, it's a better full eclipse than I remember seeing when I was in third grade. Wow. In Ramstein, Germany. Wow. And then that was maybe 10 or 15 years ago uh, when you were that, in third that, grade? It was about <laughs> uh, in multiples of 15. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, that was around uh, uh, 1962. Ooh. Wow, wow. Well, this is so much fun. And it's exciting, isn't it? It is, it is. Thank you, guys. And these are things... from this area? Where you... Yeah, we are uh, from Hayward. Okay. Uh, uh, a small city about the size of Glen, uh, Glen Rose. Okay. Hey, guys. Do you all have any uh, experience, uh, opinions, feelings right now? Um, Excitement. Yeah. Yeah, because he saw uh, the last eclipse in kindergarten. Did you and really? And he's in seventh grade now. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Cool. So Where are y'all from? Uh, Burleson. Okay, is that Texas? Yeah, it's okay. about uh, 40 okay. minutes from here. Cool. So what are you thinking so far? I just think it's really neat that with the, with the earth rotating and the moon moving, we're seeing all this happen. I just think it's really neat that God allows this to happen. Yeah. It's like the movements of a, of a clock, or yeah. it's all in design. It has all this, you know, um, engineering in it, and, and God's done all this. But these are massive bodies moving through space at, you know, millions of miles an hour. Okay, guys, you want to be on TV? Yes. Are y'all having fun? Yes. Okay, we are literally just a few minutes away from totality, and it's just stunning. Okay, so everyone, ready? Put your seatbelts on. You don't have seatbelts? Oh my goodness, what are we gonna do? 
We're gonna get my beautiful wife, Karen's reaction. This is your first solar. This is amazing, yeah. Eclipse. This okay. is so cool. We're getting so close. Check it out. It's amazing. Oh, well, it's okay, really cool. I'm gonna stay with you. Okay. For the last year, a few. Let me make sure you he's on. We are so very close. close. Like we are so close. It's just a it's like a sliver. Yeah, it's almost there. It's like this eerie feeling. I know. So yeah, it's like the middle of the day. And here, the light is, it's a weird, weird light. I'm sure there's a scientific description of it. We have the, we have the shofar. It'll get dark in a minute. Going here. We're so close. Like another minute, probably. We're so close. So close. Here we go. Here we go. It's the, it's the smallest, smallest little sliver. In a second, the lights are just going to go out. This is this is my second total eclipse, and this is this is so amazing. And we have hardly any clouds right here. The forecast was for clouds, like we wouldn't be able to see it, but we're seeing it. God is so good. We're going to see the diamond, the diamond ring here in a second. I mean, just just the eeriness, the eeriness of this. Look at these kids. Be careful, kids, with your glasses. Don't look at the sun yet. It's almost gone. It's almost gone. We're so close. Everyone's getting excited. Pan over. Check, check out these kids. Okay, we can start to see, uh, I think, planets or stars. It's the middle of the day. We can see stars. Okay, there's the diamond ring, guys. There it is. Tilt up. Woo! Amazing. This is incredible. Wow. Uh <laughs> Woo! Oh, this is so awesome. We are in totality, folks. This is an experience that you just can't get. I mean, it is 1.39 in the day, in the afternoon. The sun is normally beating down on us. And just look at that. Okay, we see the corona. You can see the, the uh, plasma coming off the sun. The moon is exactly right in the middle of that. We have about three minutes of totality. Oh, this is incredible. And now we should also see some, some heavenly bodies. Let me see if I can identify them for you. I have an app here because we're going to be able to see a number of planets today because all of these stars are, or, or planets are lined up. I have an app called Star Tracker. Okay, just to the left of the sun, I don't know if I can see it, is Mercury above it. And now to the right is Venus, Venus and Neptune. And Saturn, we can also see Saturn down here. Let's see what that one is up there. That one's Jupiter and Uranus right up there. So we have all of these planets lining up as well with the 2024 total solar eclipse, Glenn Rose, Texas. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. This is the most exciting thing ever. We're here at the Promise in Glen Rose, Texas. I just wish you could see the camera will not pick it up, but we are seeing the corona for free to God. All right, what are you feeling right now, hon? Total solar eclipse. The heavens declare the glory of God. I mean, it's just amazing. Totally amazing, like just wow. And you can see some of the planets and it's just like, like almost like a diamond ring. I mean, it's beautiful, beautiful. Really oh, cool to wow. experience. I'm getting emotional, babe. It's so amazing. Glad I can experience it with you. Yeah. That's awesome. cool. God is good, isn't he? Yeah. And he cleared the skies. Cleared I the mean, skies. There's like, there's like not a cloud in the sky. We're like surrounded by an opening. So, okay. Start to come back out start to come back out we got the other diamond ring so we've passed totality we gotta be careful with our eyes now be careful with our eyes now okay it's starting to come back out what an experience i hope all of you that are watching the youtube special the eclipse from glen rose texas we're at the promise the epitheater in glen rose what an amazing experience i'm with my beautiful wife karen this has been incredible and it's coming back out you see how it's getting light again well, God bless all of you. We are so excited to be able to experience this incredible phenomenon. 
we got to be careful not to look at this without the, the glasses and it's coming off. It's just a teeny little sliver, but now on the other side. Awesome, awesome, awesome. This has been one of the most incredible experiences of our lives and I'm glad that you guys are part of this as well. God bless you. It's amazing. That's, it shows how wonderful God is. I just love it. <laughs> it was incredible. That was the coolest thing I've ever seen in my whole life. I think it's pretty good as Scout's creation. It's my first time seeing it. I thought it was fantastic because like everything just went so dark and you could actually see the stars. Like I thought you were going to see anything. I don't know where to start. It is just absolutely amazing. God cleared the sky. Yeah, it was so cloudy this morning and somehow all the clouds went away. It was amazing Great. that God created that. That was just the coolest thing I've ever seen. It's an odd feeling, weird, but amazing. But I believe it also shows us how small we are, mm. but it also shows us how much God loves us, you know, that even though we are that minute, he still loves us enough to die for us. During totality, a woman at the Creation Evidence Museum's event took this picture. What is probably a lens flare is also a beautiful reminder of Jesus, the creator and savior on the cross. When the Son of God died, the sun became dark, as if the creation itself mourned for its creator. Sin is dark, but the light of the world dispelled the darkness when he arose the third day. Oh, how much God loves us. I'm reminded of when Jesus died. The earth was literally mourning the Creator. The sky in the middle of the day grows dark, not for three minutes, but for three hours. Jesus bleeding out, becoming sin, being beaten and spat upon and mocked and ridiculed, the one that created us, we are treating him so horrible. How awful it was the way we did with the Son of God, the Creator on the cross. But He did it for us. He did it for our sin. He did it to express His great love, His great mercy, His great grace. He's a powerful God. He's an amazing God. He spoke all of this into existence, and we rebelled against Him. But He loved us so much that He came to die for our sins, for your sins. And maybe this eclipse event will make you more aware of him, more uh, accepting of the fact that we are created in his image, but we failed and we've fallen and we've fallen short of the glory of God. No one can save themselves. We need Jesus. He came and died the death we couldn't die. He paid for our sins. He rose again. He's alive. The sun has come back out. He arose and he will never die. As long as he's alive, those that put their trust in him, one time, will never die either. We have eternal life. We're born again. Jesus said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him, to trust in him, should not perish, which is hell, but have everlasting life. My friends, that's the solution to all of our problems. The biggest problem is sin and death and hell. But Jesus paid for that so that we can have eternal life and be reconciled back to him. God bless you, and I'm so glad that you joined us today here on In Grace. Hey, I hope you enjoyed our program on YouTube. We want to continue to provide you some great videos on God, the Bible, and how it all connects with our world. It would really help us if you would consider subscribing to the InGrace YouTube channel, we would also like to have you comment. We will try to read and respond to them. And we also need you to hit the notification button and like the InGrace episode that you just saw. These ways will help more people hear about InGrace and more people hear the gospel of grace.